Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Deck and Around the Plug. Today we are really excited to have Keller O'Neill on to talk about his newest project, Marvelous Decks. But before we jump into it, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And ring the bell. So what's up, Keller? How are you doing today, man? Going great. How are you guys? We're doing well, man. We're we excited to have doing. you uh, back on. We are doing very well. Uh, I guess I should say it's quite marvelous to be on here. Uh, <laughs> Dude, this is like the, the coming out party, you know? It's like all hats off. Nobody knew who was behind Marvelous Decks, and it was a secret up until this point. And, you know, here is the mastermind, one of the masterminds behind Marvelous Decks. Yeah, so it's interesting. You know, Marvelous Decks has, has been um, a thought process of mine for a long time. And mm. uh, just... You know, it, it was just finding the perfect topic to be the number one deck, uh, which is, I guess, yeah. everyone, uh, you know, if you're creating something for the first time, that's the biggest thing is what is going to be the theme of this project. Yeah. And right. so I thought, how great would it be to celebrate the details of life? And that could be uh, anything, really. But um for some reason, hummingbird feathers just popped right into my head, and I said, "I've got to make it happen." So that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, who wouldn't want to hold a hummingbird in their hand, right? I mean, just looking at a hummingbird, and you know, we have hummingbird feeders, uh, you know, in our yard, and it's just—it's always cool seeing. I mean, they're just—it it just makes me think that from the future, just the way they fly and the way they I mean they don't even land on anything you know they're just always flying and it's just it's I, don't know. I mean I know some people have touched touched them and they feed you know some people can feed them out of their hands depending on how they manipulate the feeder and stuff like that but for the most part like people don't usually touch hummingbirds you know it's just kind of that sasquatch of the flying world <laughs> yeah they're they're very fascinating creatures and uh, with with doing this project there was a lot of research that went into uh, hummingbirds and mm. act and and how their feathers act and how do their feathers actually reflect light and so um, so cool yeah it's really neat and I what, think uh, go ahead, go ahead Steve. I was gonna say what what made you come up with the different colors uh, you know because obviously hummingbirds come in so many different colors what yeah what made you land on those three so there are uh, yeah lots of hummingbirds and. The idea of the hummingbirds, you mentioned that people hold them in their hands, they take pictures. You see that a lot of that on Instagram posts or nature videos. But really what popped into my mind was uh, when I was a child, my grandmother had a hummingbird feeder. And mm -hmm. we would always, us grandchildren, would go out and actually help her put the, the sugar water into the feeder. And we would sit there and just watch these hummingbirds. And when I was thinking of marvelous, I thought, wow, what is more marvelous than actually sitting there and watching something shimmer in the light while yeah. it's feeding? And it's interesting because hummingbirds, their heartbeat is like 1,200 beats a minute. It's crazy. So, and they're, they're iridescent feathers, and you can actually look at different hummingbirds, and you know they range from orange to purple to, to pinkish, red all over blue, um, all over the spectrum. But what makes their feathers shine and iridescent is the air bubbles. Isn't that, it's so strange, the air bubbles, they're actually in the feathers. Wow. Uh, when they move their necks, or when they move around, it makes the light shine in different ways. And it's so fascinating because if you look up close uh, to a hummingbird, like if you're I've actually held one in my hand before. One got in my garage at home and it wore itself out. And I finally, it sort of fell to the ground and I picked it up and nursed it for about an hour. And then it just took off away from my hand. But it's interesting because when you're so close to them, you don't actually get that shininess as much as you do interesting. actually flying around. Um, so it's, you know, the colors that we decided to come up with, uh, being the the purple the red and the blue and even though they'll have more uh, the vibe you'll actually see different spectrums of colors uh, in the cards but um, those three colors i think are more are the most prominent in the hummingbird uh, families 
but I also think they're the most appealing uh, colors, you know, when you get down to it. And people people love those three different colors. So they, um, you know, that's how it come, came to the decision of that. Nice. Right, cool. That's cool. The, the air bubbles are going to kind of be the air cushion, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never thought about it like that. But, yeah. yeah. That's cool. And so I think one of the interesting things about this deck, obviously, in addition to the subject matter, is really the innovative approach you've taken to capturing the iridescence in the tuck and in the cards. What kind of went throughout that whole process? Yeah, so again, going back to the original research of, of hummingbirds and looking how the light uh, you know, reflects off their feathers, I had the concept of creating this, especially on the backs of the cards and the tucks, but the big question comes is how do you make that happen in a printing process? And so um, I'm uh, good friends with Chris Tipton, who owns Fresh Impressor, Impression Letterpress. That's Fresh Impression Letterpress. <laughs> Say that three times fast. And right. uh, he is a brilliant artist and craftsman of the trade of letterpress. And so I got to, to talking about it and he's like, yeah, we can make that happen. It'll take some work, but we can make it happen. And uh, with the design aspect of the deck, it's important that when you're creating something for the printing process, whether it be a four color process, sort of getting down deep of, of how, you know, the four color process works, you, you've got to be able to one, make those colors shimmer and shine on the backs of the cards. But then when it comes to the tuck process, you've got to be able to create on a piece of paper, a 3D image that not only shimmers and shines, but also that when you touch it and feel it, it actually has texture. And that's what makes letterpress such a, a great medium because it it's just not a flat sheet of paper that yeah. has it on it. Right. And so part of the marvelous concept is that this deck and decks to come down the road uh, are, are actually tangible. When you hold them, they're actually extremely satisfying. And, um, and then you, you know, when you help hold it and you're playing cards with it or you're doing cardistry with it or magic effects, whatever it might be, that people actually stop and go, whoa, what a beautiful deck of cards. And, uh, you know, because extremely eye-catching is important in all of those facets of what you're doing, not as much in playing cards, but in cardistry and magic, I think that's very important, so. I think it's important in everything. I mean, from to eating to, I mean, it, it literally surrounds us all the time. I think it's cool if I'm playing, you know, cards with someone, I look across and it doesn't matter if it's fish, rummy, whatever, and you're looking across the table and you see these beautiful, you know, backs just shimmering, I think it'd be really cool. You know, maybe it will make even people think of hummingbirds or whatever you know the back may be you know yeah and and ultimately in my mind i wanted this deck of cards to be as if you're holding in your hand i thought about holding that hummingbird in my hand i wanted it to you know as you're holding it go wow you know it really is like a hummingbird yeah. most people have never experienced that but i think that it it sort of takes you back you know the whole marvelous concept is producing products that sort of take you back to um, your childhood, whether it be, you know, hummingbirds with grandmothers, like like I mentioned, or, um, you know, it might be just, um, you know, tangible things. Uh, you know, think of things that sort of bring emotion to you. It might be a glass of something or a cake that was made by somebody, or, I mean, it could be anything. There's lots of different marvelous things uh, yeah. that we have in our life. Um, and so that's the whole concept of, of this series is to bring those things in your hand that then you, you know, represented on a deck of cards. So that's really cool. Yeah. Now, can you, can you kind of give us the, the lowdown details of the, the decks? Like, you know, what stock it's on, you know, who's printing them, who's, yeah, you know, so, you said, uh, you know, fresh impression is doing the tuck, but mm -hmm. uh, if you can give us the kind of details, uh, of the decks and the packages that you have. Yeah, so Fresh Impression will, of course, be doing the tucks. Uh, the cards will be printed by Carter Mundy uh, on the uh, Slimline uh, linen finish stock, which nice. I think is the most perfect stock. Yeah. It is phenomenal. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, of course, it's going to be beautiful, but also Carter Mundy is at the top of the game. 
when it comes to cold foil. And of course, these decks not only use cold foil, but ink on the fronts and the backs. Uh, they're also, these decks, the, the hummingbird feathers are borderless, which I thought was very important in this, is instead of having white borders around the cards, uh, wanted to, you know, have the full effect on the card backs. Right. Faces uh, are based on traditional uh, card faces, uh, the suits, but the main reason for that is I want these cards to be playable. You know, you want people to be able to recognize um, the actual card faces, and but they've been um, themed with hummingbirds uh, built within. If you actually look up close uh, in the images, they actually have uh, small hummingbird feathers. They may have hummingbirds on their chest. So we brought that in. Uh, the aces, of course, uh, those images are coming very soon, but they're... Uh, a play on the hummingbirds themselves. So they're going to be nice. really cool. Very cool. Uh, so the theme inside of the deck, not only on the back, but on the other sides, bring the hummingbird vibe together. Nice. That's cool. Now, what? Um, when are these going to be uh, estimated delivery? Yeah, so estimated delivery uh, is January at this point. Awesome. Uh, which, Sweet. of course... Um, MarvelousDex.com has all the details uh, that we just mentioned on the, you know, if you actually click on, on the images, uh, it gives all those details about Cardamundi and then fresh impression and then also uh, the pre-order and the release date in January. So Very awesome. nice. Yeah. So yeah, what made you, uh, oh, go ahead, Steve. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, so what made you decide for this deck to go with a pre-order versus Kickstarter? Yeah, so... Um, you know, that was a decision that I made um, thinking in terms of Marvelous Dex is, is one of those things that uh, I plan on, you know, growing from, you know, the ground up. Um, and, you know, Kickstarter is great. And uh, in all honesty, you know, I, I've seen some companies where they're actually, they'll release a deck and then, uh, after a while, you might see it on Kickstarter of a different version or such as that. Kickstarter's great. And of course, you know, the uh, Charmers deck, which uh, was done uh, in collaboration with Lotric, uh, was done Kickstarter, very successful. And um, there was just, there was a lot of thought process of like, which way do you go? I'm not sure necessarily one way is better than the other. You know, that's always, I guess, up in the air. Uh, right. I felt like that that marvelous uh, would be well received, and the community had been very positive uh, from the get go. So it was just ultimately a decision that uh, I made to you know just go website pre order versus Kickstarter. So um, nice, no true reason, but uh, just the the way I decided to go. Yeah. Well, now they're sense. they're limited, right? They have like different limited yeah. series or. So there are 225 uh, limited standard sets, which are three decks in that set. There's also a gilded uh, limited set, 225 in that as well. Uh, and then there's also uh, limited bricks, and there's also limited uncut sheets as well. There's also uh, half bricks as well. So, um, And there's also uh, the option to buy single cards. Um, card decks, but not in the gilded version, just in standard. Right. Okay. Now, the, so the standard is unlimited, and the sets themselves are are limited. You know, they have a uh, limited. Now, are they going to be have a box or how? how? Yeah. So there's there's boxes for both. Uh, as far as the now, as far as the uh, half bricks and the bricks, there's boxes, um, and then there's special packaging for those three deck sets as well. Um, okay. And of course, the 225 of the standard three deck set and the 225 of the gilded uh, set will be signed and numbered on those as well. So, cool. Yeah, very cool. Right on. So, I think uh, for anyone who's interested in finding out more about these hummingbird decks, hummingbird feather playing cards from Marvelous Decks, check out marvelousdecks.com. I know Keller. I'm really excited to get these in hand and really see how how the attention to detail that I know you put into your projects is really going to come through here. I think just looking at some of the pictures and at the cards themselves, 
there is everything I think a collector especially could want from these with the fact that there's embossing, foil, the the coloring on the on the front of the cards, everything about it just speaks to that front of it. But the fact that it's going to be usable too and on a you know a, a well-known stock is exciting to me as well. Yeah. Yeah. And and we want it to, like I said, be a card deck that uh, you know, that collectors would be proud to sit on a shelf, but also uh, that just, you know, someone who does cardistry. Uh, would like to just show off to, to family, friends on the street, where have you, and then, um, you know, just for a game playing night. I mean, why not? Right. Be just a, a beautiful piece. Uh, and also, you know, from a gift giving standpoint, that's sort of the way I, that I look at Marvelous too, is that, you know, what a cool gift to give to to someone who loves nature, someone who loves yeah, just beautiful things. Bird yeah, watching, absolutely. like yeah. I'm sure there's uh, a ton of people that would be totally psyched for the deck. Yeah, and that's actually been something that we've uh, got a tremendous amount of followers, which was something that I sort of underestimated of uh, that just are nature lovers and love hummingbirds. Yeah. Like, that's man, awesome. Have that deck because it it's something that I that represents something I already adore. So, yeah, I mean, let, let's be honest. Anybody who doesn't like hummingbirds, I don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> They're just thought about it that way, but uh, you know, like if you don't like a hummingbird, uh, you might want to look in the mirror or something and find out what's wrong with yeah. you. <laughs> and you know, with uh, this this marvelous series, uh, there's big things uh, to come of other other decks. So keep your keep your watch out. So yeah, nice. we're definitely going to keep an eye on marvelous decks. Like we said, you can find the pre order information or even purchase a pre order at marvelousdecks.com. We'll link to that down below as well. Keller, we are so excited to see where you bring bring this brand. I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of marvelous things in the world that I look forward to seeing on a deck of playing cards. And I couldn't think Can of someone better to you know really manifest that. I have a um, perfect idea. We should make a marvelous deck of Tyler's beard. <laughs> that would be awesome because so many people love his beard. Look at his beard; he's got a perfect beard. That would be awesome. That would I don't be know if I, I don't know if I'd like the embossed texture on that. Talk, so. <laughs> put some stars in there, and you know, yeah. Yeah, we'll just on. put some glitter in there. You know, sparkle some glitter; it'll be good to go. Oh, man, I don't know if I'd go to the marvelous <laughs> level with that one, but, but I appreciate the sentiment, Steve. Uh, hey, I, I, I knew Steve, by the way, in a former life where he didn't have a beard. Yeah, yeah, oh, it's very true. Yeah, one day it'll it'll return. So, or the, the, <laughs> the clean shaven aspect will return. So, yeah. this right beards are beards are unwieldy, man. <laughs> but <laughs> thank you everyone for checking out this episode of Deck Around the Plug. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, make sure to check out the presale on marvelousdecks.com. These things are absolutely beautiful decks. If you have any appreciation for a deck of playing cards that's unique and really to the highest level of you know quality and, and thought, this is a deck to check out. Thanks, guys, so much. Thank you, Thank Keller. you very much. Peace!